Hello, and welcome to The Daily Poem. I'm Heidi White, and I'm filling in for David Kern today. Today's poem is Epiphany Poem by George McKay Brown. The Red King came to a great water. He said, here the journey ends, no keel or skipper on this shore. The Yellow King halted under a hill. He said, turn the camels round, beyond ice summits only. The Black King knocked on a city gate. He said, all roads stop here. These are gravestones, no inn. The three kings met under a dry star. There, at midnight, the star began its singing. The three kings suffered salt, snow, skulls. They suffered the silence before the first word. George McKay Brown was a Scottish poet. He was born in 1921, so he wrote during the 20th century, lived and wrote during the 20th century. Uh, You can tell many of you who are poetry lovers um, probably already guessed that from my reading. You can tell that he's a modern poet, a 20th century poet, uh, because his very terse and spare style. You don't hear a lot of description. You don't hear a lot of adjectives uh, or a lot of commentary on the poem itself within the poem. It has a very spare style, and that's characteristic of 20th century modern poets like George McKay Brown. And what that does to the modern poetry is that it makes every word carry a very great weight. And that's true pretty much in all poetry, with some exceptions, but really great poetry. The words are carefully chosen, every single one of them. But there's a very great weight to that in the modern poets, uh, that you're paying attention to every adjective, to every verb, uh, to the placement of words and description in these poems, because They don't have this long kind of flowery, uh, rhythmical, metrical kind of um, form to it. So the content and the form mingle together as in all poems. So within these uh, great 20th century modern poets, you find a condensed meaning with all of the chosen words and syntax within the poem. So this is an epiphany poem, that's the actual title. An epiphany is today. If you're a part of of the Western liturgical tradition, the Anglican, the Catholic tradition, or if you're a, a, a follower of those kinds of things, you'll know that today, January 6th, is the liturgical holiday of Epiphany, which in the Western church honors the three wise men or the the magi that came to worship the Christ child and give him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. So this poem, Epiphany poem, has three kings, a red king, a yellow king, and a black king. So already those adjectives, again, in these modern poems, um, tell us something. Uh, And, you know, you could go to kind of this allegorical meaning of what does red and yellow and black stand for, Uh, or you can go more simply as readers and interpreters of this poem and think maybe George McKay Brown was looking at a painting or a picture of the three kings. Uh, What's interesting about this poem is that according to George McKay Brown, these kings, these magi, Uh, come to various obstacles along the way. And it sounds as though there's three separate journeys, which that's what I find very interesting about this poem. Uh, The the traditional interpretation of the Magi's journey is that these kings travel together. But in this poem, it seems as though, even though it's not explicitly stated, the implication is that there are three separate kings going on three separate journeys, encountering three different and separate obstacles. The red king comes to a great water and almost gives up. The yellow king halts under a hill and sees these 
ice summits before him and almost gives up. The black king comes to a city gate that's full of the dead, gravestones, uh, no inns, no hotels, no place to stay, and almost turns around. And yet, and yet, in the fourth stanza, the three kings meet at midnight under a dry star. And there, the star begins to sing, which to me references uh, the medieval belief that the cosmos are in a great harmony, a great dance. Um, Kepler taught that the stars create a a cosmic singing, a a harmony of creation. And here are these three kings who've encountered these great obstacles and almost turned around. Uh, And the poem doesn't tell us why they keep going. The poem doesn't even tell us that they keep going. The kings in each of the first three stanzas decide to go back, and yet they meet under a dry star that begins to sing. And then this final stanza is just masterful. I think it's wonderful. The three kings suffered salt, snow, skulls. They suffered the silence before the first word. You hear a lot of alliteration there with the S sound. They suffered salt, snow, and skulls, and silence before the first word. This is an incarnation poem. Uh, John 1 tells us that Christ, the Christ child, was word made flesh. And here George McKay Brown plays with that idea of the silence before the word. The kings suffered, and yet they do encounter the Christ child under this singing star. Uh, Again, there's alliteration there. So today... On this Epiphany Day, January 6th, let's listen to Epiphany Poem, again, by George McKay Brown. The Red King came to a great water. He said, here the journey ends, no keel or skipper on this shore. The Yellow King halted under a hill. He said, turn the camels round, beyond ice summits only. The black king knocked on a city gate. He said, all roads stop here. These are gravestones, no inn. The three kings met under a dry star. There, at midnight, the star began its singing. The three kings suffered salt, snow, skulls. They suffered the silence before the first word. This has been The Daily Poem. We'll see you next time for another poem.